Hello there! In today's video we'll be making logos. We'll start with something as simple as this logo of Nike. Then we'll move on a few notches up to the Adidas logo. And then finally quite a few notches up in the level of difficulty to the Mermaid. I'm sure you know what company this is. Yes, you guessed it right. It's Starbucks, one of the most admired companies in the world. So let's get started. We're going to start with the simplest logo. Now as a designer, whenever we look at a logo on our minds, we should start constructing it. And the first question we should ask ourselves is how can we easily make this logo without using a pen or curvature tool? The reason I'm saying this is because not everyone is excellent at both these tools, particularly if you are a beginner, you'll face difficulty making this simple logo using a pen tool as well. So the best option is using shapes to make logos and then we can tweak, twist, turn, blend and do loads of things to our shapes using other tools. However, for this logo, since it's ultra simple, it would be a bigger task to use the ellipse in line tool to make this logo than the pen tool. Let me grab the ellipse tool and try to fit it to make the curve and you will understand it better. I can always use the ellipse tool for the two curves, one on inside and the outside curve as well. And then I can use the line tool or even the pen tool to make lines and then join them eventually. However, like I mentioned, it, this logo is so simple that with a little bit of practice, I can easily make this using the pen tool. And I think eventually, if you calculate the time, you should be able to make it in a, in a much lesser time using the pen tool than using shape and line tool. So let's dim the image to about 50% by double clicking layer one so that we're able to see our line while tracing. And then just lock layer one as we'll be working on layer two to do the trace. Also, fill should be set to none and stroke should be anywhere between 0.25 to one as this is not really a busy logo that has a lot of uh, small individual shapes. This is pretty straightforward single shaped logo and then we can start tracing it from a corner. It's always best practice to hit the tab key as it removes the toolbar and the unnecessary panels on the right and uh, gives you a lot of space to trace. This is particularly good if you have a small screen laptop or computer. Our first logo is made and this anomaly can easily be adjusted with the direct selection tool and using the anchor handle. So while tracing, if certain anchor points derail for whatever reason, don't let them intimidate you. You can always attend them once your tracing is complete. So just click on the handle and adjust them accordingly. Perfect. And once you're contented with your trace, fill it with the logo color, which in this case is black. Okay, let's move on to the next one now. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, when you look at this logo, what do you think? How can you create this logo using shapes? Think about it. If you look closely, you'll find there are two shapes that are repeated in here. One is this oval shape with pointed corners on both sides. And the other one is the rectangle. So let's make the oval shape first. I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and make two big circles like this. And now using the shape builder tool, I'm going to remove the outer shapes. And there you go. You've got a first shape ready. Now all we need to do is place it in the center and resize it using click and drag and then make two copies and rotate them to fit as per the logo. Perfect. It's time to grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle and fit it to the first blank space. And then using distort and transform, we can make four copies for the rest. So let's go to effect, distort and transform and change the number of copies to four as we'll need four more rectangles for this design. And for vertical point size, we'll have to do a little bit of adjustment to get to the right size. And once we're happy with the size and the setting, hit OK. Now let's pick the life paint bucket from the toolbar on the left. 
you'll find it sitting under the Shape Builder tool in the same panel. Since we know it's a black and white logo, we can easily fill the color from the color palette on the right. Otherwise, you could always use the Paint Bucket tool to pick sample colors using Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and then clicking once to paint the shape. Our logo is almost ready, so to get rid of the unnecessary shapes, go to Live Paint Selection Tool, which you will find right under the Live Paint Bucket tool, and click on the unnecessary shapes and lines and hit Delete or Backspace to remove them. Congratulations guys, you just successfully made the Adidas logo. So it's time to move to the last one, which is slightly more difficult than the first two. Actually, more than difficult, it is time consuming. Okay, so looking at this logo, I know that I can't really use a lot of shapes to make this except the ellipse tool for the two circles that I can clearly see. The rest I need to make using the pen tool. However, since it's a symmetrical image, the good news is that I do not have to trace the entire logo. So what I'm going to do is hide half of the logo. By clicking on it, I can know the midpoint of the logo and then I can drag the guide from the left and place it to the midpoint. Now using a rectangle with a white fill, I'm going to hide half of the logo. Now I need to make just this half. And once made, I'll just mirror it using the flip option. So first of all, let's lock this layer along with the rectangle that we've used to hide the logo. And we'll do the tracing on layer 2. Now I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and make two circles to match the circular shapes on the logo. And then I'm also going to use the line tool as a reference and uh, also as a starting point from the center. Now grab the pen tool and start tracing. Whether you trace the portion in green or the white space does not really matter as we'll be using the live paint bucket to paint the image eventually. So as long as we have the lines dividing the different parts of the logo, it wouldn't really make much of a difference. Try to be as accurate as you can and uh, I can understand it demands a little more work than the other two logos we made. But trust me, once made, the satisfaction you get out of it will make you forget this extra effort. Okay, our tracing is now complete. So let's select all and grab the Shape Builder tool and holding Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, let's click to remove the unwanted areas from the logo. All right, now it's time to grab the Live Paint Bucket and also let's bring our image back to its color by unchecking the Dim Image option by double clicking on it and hold Option once and the cursor will change to the eyedropper tool. So click once on the actual logo to sample the logo color and then click on areas that are green and it will smoothly paint everything it's clicked on. Once you've painted it completely, select all and remove the stroke from the stroke panel on the right. Also with the half logo selected, go to object and click on expand and hit OK when you get the pop-up menu. And then do a command C on a Mac or control C on a PC to copy it. And then command F on a Mac or control F on a PC to paste it on front. And then click on flip horizontally option on the right. And you'll find a copy of the logo flipped right on top of the one you've just made. So holding shift, just drag it to the right and place it properly to complete the entire logo. Finally, to stitch both parts of the logo, select all and grab the Shape Builder tool and just click and drag and it's gonna be one image now. 
All right, fellas, that concludes our session today from the simplest to complex logo type. I hope you've learned something new from this tutorial. So if you've liked the video, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Until we meet again, goodbye and thanks for watching.